Welcome back to my dark room. Today, we're going over part two of our three-part series of how to make an RA4 color print. Today, we're going to look at how to make our basic exposure and color balance. Part one was the tools and materials necessary, and part three will cover some more advanced techniques. Welcome to the Naked Photographer, where I'll be exposing myself, no, 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 I won't. Mm -hmm. That's not better in my head. Just like making a black and white print, you want to start by putting your negative in the carrier, carrier in the enlarger, and then focusing your image. When it comes to filtration, you don't want to start at zero. That will give you just a completely wrong print every time. Now, older papers used to give you a starting point. Newer papers, it's not on the box anymore. If you get a Fuji brand, there's no starting filtration recommended at all. Kodak does recommend in their tech sheet, which unfortunately is buried deep on in the sheet and then on Kodak Alaris's website, um, is a starting point for optical enlarging. And that is zero cyan, 40 points magenta, and 50 points yellow. And it's a good starting point for any print. So if you don't know where to start, go ahead and set your enlarger to that. Now I have a starting point with my own enlarger of 60 points magenta and 40 points of yellow. Now that's just from my own experience with my negatives in my darkroom. For you, I would recommend starting with the Kodak recommendation and until you develop your own base of uh, 50 yellow and 40 magenta. Once we have that, it's time to go ahead and make a first test strip. So just like a black and white, we're going to take a piece of paper or a strip of paper. We're going to expose in increments of two to three seconds per increment. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, now for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and use a full sheet of paper for my test prints. You do not need to. You can do just a strip uh, that goes over a, at least the important stuff of your print. But I'm going to use a whole sheet so that you can easily see what it is that I'm looking at and what I'm doing. So keep that in mind. I might be wasting some paper. You don't necessarily have to. Another note about test strips. If you're using a drum to process like I am, then you'll want to cut your test strips to go around the circumference of the drum, not the length. Typically with the drum, there are little tabs or holders to hold the paper on the ends of the circumference, but there isn't anything for length. So if you cut your paper, uh, for example, if I'm using my Jobo drum, the 10 inch length fits the eight inch in the circumference. So I'll cut my paper, if I'm doing a test strip, into eight inch wide and then two inch long or eight inch long, two inch wide strips and put them in the drum. If I were using the Sema or Chromega brand drum, it's the opposite. The 10 inch goes around the circumference, the eight inch the depth. So I would cut my strips lengthwise, 10 inches long, two inches wide. So figure out the way that you want to do. If you're using trays, it doesn't matter. It's a tray just like black and white. And then if it's a rotary transport, again, it doesn't matter. So just make sure you feed it in so that the long strip goes in uh, rather than the short width going in. So let's go ahead and turn the lights out and make our first test strip exposure. All right, looking at this, I've got my two, four, six, eight, ten 10 seconds. The eight seconds, I am losing too much of my shadows here. It's a little too dense. My six seconds seems to be a little too low contrast. Um, I'm not really getting any depth in my shadows. So what I'm going to do is choose time right in between. I could choose seven seconds just flat out, but I'm actually gonna go 20% more than the six. That would be 7.2 seconds. 
know it's a little finicky, but um, that's what I'm gonna do. So let's set this again to 7.2. And I'm going to maintain the color settings of 60 magenta and 45 yellow. Doesn't look like that's right, but I'm at least going to get the whole print so that I can um, make sure. So let's go make a print. Okay, looking at this, I can definitely see that the color is not right, but the density is. So I'm going to keep my time setting, 7.2. Now, the overall color cast is a little on the magenta side. How can you tell it's magenta versus red? Overall, it could be easily mistaken for red, and I'm going to double check before I make my next print. But what I'm really looking at because the foliage has different color. There's greens, yellows, browns, but this pole right in the middle should be neutral. That was just a piece of weathered wood and there was no color cast to it when I photographed it. When I look at that, it does not appear red. There's a slight pinkish color to it. That would be magenta. So I'm going to take my viewing filter kit and we're going to check both red and magenta. So we take the opposite color. In this case, red is the opposite of cyan. Magenta is the opposite of green. So, taking the cyan filters, I'm going to look at the print through the filter, but the technique here is not to just stare at the print through the filter. It will, um, your brain will adjust relatively quickly to the other color. It's kind of like how your brain adjusts from a 5000K light source to a 3400K light source. Your brain's really good at white balancing. And it'll do the same through here. It'll start to look exactly the same through the filter or not. So you just kind of want to flick it in front of your eyes for just a moment and look through the different densities as you do so in order to see if that color cast goes away. In this case, looking through the cyan does clean up some red, but I'm still getting that pinkish color through the filter. So I'm going to try again with green. There's a five, there's a 10 point, there's the 20 point. Yeah, 20 points actually does quite a bit. Yeah, five does virtually nothing. 10's better. Yeah, 20 gets rid of almost all of it. So um, I'm going to adjust. Right under here, it tells me add 20 magenta. So I'm going to go up to my larger and we are going to add 20 points magenta. So since this is 60 magenta and 45 yellow, I'm going to change the dials to 80 magenta and keep the 45 yellow. Here we are, next test print. It looks much, much better but there's still something off about it, especially in my neutrals. And I can kind of see it in my greens. They have a little bit too cool of a color. So it could be a little too cyan. It could be a little too blue. It's very easy to confuse the two when you're new at this. Cyan, as far as a photograph goes, is the blue sky. It is that deep, cool color. Blue is almost a purple when we're talking about photographs. So this is my cyan. Let me see if I can show it a little easier for you. Okay, white piece of paper, cyan. You can see that that is more of a sky blue color. Now, contrast that with blue. And you'll see that blue almost appears purplish. So when you're looking to eliminate blue, 
it's going to have that purple almost magenta-ish color. Not as pink as magenta, but definitely not a sky blue. So when I look in here and I look at what I'm seeing in my neutral and what I'm seeing in my shadows appears more blue than cyan. That means I need to use the opposite of blue to eliminate it. And the opposite of blue is yellow. So let's take my yellow out. And let's see what we have. It's very slight, so I'm going to start with the five point. That does clean it up pretty well. And then the stronger, I mean the 20 point just makes it look yellow. That's just too strong. I'm not that far off. 10. The 10 cleans up the shadows really well, but it makes the green uh, way too warm. The 5 looks good, so I'm going to change this 5 points yellow. So this tells me to subtract 5 yellow. So if this is 80 magenta, 45 yellow, my next print's going to be 80 magenta, 40 yellow. Okay, here is the next print, and I'm still getting a slightly pinkish magenta um, shadow on that side. So I'm going to double check to make sure I don't have anything in there. Now the nice thing about a color head is I can make very small one point increment changes. If I were using separate filters, two and a half points I believe is the most uh, change or the smallest amount of change you can do. Let's see, that's going to be the green opposite of magenta. And let's see if that makes a better print. Okay, 10 points makes the neutral just appear green, so that's too much. The 5, however, the 5, particularly up through this part of the shadow of the, uh, the pillar, the pole, does clean it up. So that's add 5 magenta, so let's change it. I think one more print at 85 magenta, 40 yellow. And here we go. I like this. This looks good. Uh, I have no color cast in my neutral. My greens look nice and rich. My yellow uh, greens up here look good. So this to me is a good print. I have good density. I have good color, and all my color cast is gone. So that is my final print. 7.2 seconds for me at 85 magenta, 40 yellow, and that's it. So to recap, do a test strip to determine your density. You do not need to worry about color at that point. Then, once you figure out your time, make sure you um, do a test to see what is in the print, the overall color cast. Try a couple of different filters to see what overall color cast there is. You may have to correct for more than one, but I would suggest you do the strongest color cast first and eliminate that as much as you can. In my case, I had a very strong magenta color cast overall. Pumping up the magenta made the greens come out more, and I got a fairly good print. There was still a little bit of overall blue, which made my yellows very dull, so tune that down a little bit, got a little bit more yellow to come out, then cleaned up the last bit of magenta, and now I have a good print. I'm very pleased with this one. And those are the basics. There's really only two main concerns with a color print. The exposure time to get the right density of the print, and then the color balance, which is adjusting the filtration of your enlarger. Once you have those two things, you're 99% there. 
there are some more advanced things you can do to control contrast, and that we will look at next time. There's also ways to make sure that once you think you have the correct color, you can look at all the possibilities around it to really see if there are creative possibilities. And that's called a color ring around. We'll look at that next time as well. So remember, just get your exposure time first. Don't pay too much attention to color at that point. Then begin dialing in your filtration using the filter um, viewing kit in order to see what adjustments you need to make. Make sure you have a good color light so that you're balancing based on your display conditions. 3500K is okay if you're going to show them under 3500K lights. Daylight balanced lights will look different than 3400K lights, but the color balance of the print will look fine under either conditions. So with that said, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll meet you over in part three to look at some more advanced stuff.